All right. Hello, everybody. Today, we're just going to do something very simple. We're going to work with Zen Doodles again. Um, and what I like to do is sometimes I like to draw sort of a, a very sort of cartoonish picture and then, uh, um, then, then Zen Doodle it. And we might do a little fun little project because um, you guys haven't done this with me before, but I'm going to show you some of the things that I do. I mean, I do lots of different Zen Doodles, but this is one that I, I kind of like doing. It's like a big fish, you know, and very, very comical or whatever, but then you can doodle into it. And I don't know if he's done or not. I don't think he is because I didn't label it. Oh, yes, I did. Anyway, but there's other things you can do if you're not good at drawing animals or something like that. I really enjoyed doing feathers where you could just draw kind of a jazzy feather and then then doodle it. One of my favorites that I do with um, kids a lot is I have these pictures of chickens that I bring into the classroom and I get them to draw like quick little pencil drawings of their chickens. And I usually get them to do, you know, two or three, one, one per page. And then I say, okay, choose one that you're going to uh, redraw and um, you're going to Zen doodle it and then choose one that you're going to paint and then one that you're going to leave as a pencil drawing. Fire tablet. So you can hardly see my pencil drawing here, but it's very light. But here's the one that I Zen tangled. I started anyway, it's not done, but I started that. And then the other one, this is my painted one that I was doing, which is very, very immature and, and childish, but you know what? It looks more like a, anyway, I like doing the Zen doodle ones. And so doing Zen doodle chickens is something I, I tend to do quite a bit because how can you make, like, you don't have to be serious about chickens because they're goofy anyway. So that's the kind of thing that I was doing. So, but I could take you into a little exercise that I do with my students and it's kind of a fun thing. So I'm going to switch over to um, the overhead camera. And if you have a couple of pieces of paper. How are you? Oh, are, am I? Okay, Bill's doing that. I'm just going to grab some of my supplies. There you go. Okay. So this is one of the things I do with my students quite often. And I usually give them a, a little card. And then we do, we have a race, okay? So do you guys have Sharpie markers at all with you today? Yep. Spencer, is there a Sharpie? He's got, okay. So what I want you to do is <laughs> I want you to divide, if you have a book or two pieces of paper, I just want you to divide it in half really quickly, okay? And what you're going to do, I guess you're going to do four. And what I want to do is we're going to have a race. And the image that I want you to draw is a dog. Now, I'm going to turn mine this way because my dogs are usually tall and skinny. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw two dogs. No, three dogs. We'll draw three dogs. And we're going to race to see who can get them done first, okay? Now, my okay. dogs that I do are very cartoonish. They're very fast. I wonder if I have a picture of one here. Well, mine's like a six-stroke stick figure, so I'll be done first. Well, okay. You have to fill in some areas so that you can Zen doodle it. So you need to have at least a body and a face. So, you know, maybe I'll just draw one real quick for you. I'm going to show you sort of how I draw my dogs, okay? So if I'm drawing a dog, um, I might say, okay, he's got ears, he's got a head, he's got like the little nuzzle thing, and he's got eyes, and he's got a nose, and a little neck, and he might have a body. Oh, and there's a, there's a foot there, and a foot there, a body, and a tail. That's how fast I can draw a dog, okay? Does it look like a dog? Maybe, maybe not, but that's what I want you to do is something like that. You need something so that you can sort of see what is in that body, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a race. Okay, you ready? Three, three dogs. Three dogs, okay, and leave the other one blank for now, okay? So on your mark, get set, go. 
So you're just going to draw. And my dogs tend to always, you know, sort of be the same. One dog. Two. Oh, I'm not done him yet. Sometimes I just, you know, I start drawing it and it just doesn't work. Oh my gosh, like that one's really horrible. I gotta put a nose on him. Two dogs. Because I'm trying to go really fast. Now, the thing that I love doing about this project. Oh my goodness. There, three dogs. Well, you obviously won. Yes. Well, I, I, got, do this a lot. I got I got two done, but okay, keep going. Who's next? <laughs> Elizabeths are all gonna be like anatomically correct and <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Well, that's my problem, you see, because I can't, I can't. How many have you done? I'm on my third. Okay, good. <laughs> I was going to say. My third. <laughs> uh, I got three done. Okay. So one of the things I love doing about this project is um, when I do it with the kids, I mean, it's a race, right? So they're all, you know, energized because they're doing it. But the more fun is to go around and have a look at their drawings and sort of make fun of them, right? Because they're kind of funny. So um, let me see one of your dogs. Who, me or Elizabeth? Yeah, uh, uh, Spencer, you go first. Oh, I did my in pencil. Was I supposed to do it in those, Sharpie? Those, those, are, those are two of my I dogs. I love this guy. Oh, okay. it looks like a rat, a rat nosed dog. I love him. Here's, here's my last dog. It's a little Oh, better. I like him too. Look at his ears. <laughs> okay. Let me see your pencil ones, Elizabeth. Okay. I'm going to, I was just right going over it in Sharpie. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's hard to see, but I can sort of see yeah. them. Okay. Do another three. All right. So we're going to do one more. So what I want you to do is get your Sharpie ready. And you're going to go, on your mark, get set. Now put your Sharpie in the other hand and draw your dog with your opposite hand. I tell you, the kids just love this. They just freak out when I do this to them. Spencer looks like he's freaking out. No, I actually know how to do this. <laughs> there. And this is what I call jazzy dogs. I do these all the times with the kids. And I've quite, I've done many of them where um, I used to make cards out of them. Well, I can't tell what you did with your opposite hand, Karen. This one. <laughs> <laughs> I know it should be this one, right? Yeah, they they are are my drawings, I they figured I'd drag similar. on yours. <laughs> Can you tell which one I did with my left hand? <laughs> He's so cute. Look at his ear sticking up. I got, I got happy dogs. <laughs> you do. My dogs are happy. Excellent. You know, I actually think I have one in here. I thought I saw one today. I was looking through my box, my sketchbook. Oh. Here's my here's my right-handed dog. I'm oh. left-handed. Oh, you're left-handed dog. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, wow. this, this is a so right-handed dog because look like something. I'm left-handed. <laughs> actually look like dogs. Okay, so generally what I do with them, and I'm gonna show you one that I did in here. Uh, this one is not one that I did really quickly. I just used this, the sort of the drawings, oh, the drawings that I do, and I created this little guy. Um, Aw. Yeah, so. All it was was me just going through and just adding zen, zen tangles all over him. And I've done lots of those. I wonder where they all are. Other sketchbooks, I would expect. 
I've done so many of them and I was making cards at one point and selling the cards. But yeah, I don't have any in this sketchbook. So, all right. So once you've got your dog, then you, you, then you can just start doodling and seeing what you can add to the dog. Now, quite often I'll take one of these dogs and I will, you know, maybe go over it again with Sharpie just to change some of the lines, right? To make them a little bit more interesting. So things where maybe it didn't connect, I might connect it or I might, you know, just make it a little bit better. Or you, wanna, bit better. you want us to take one of our dogs and turn it into a Zen doodle? Is that it? Yes, I do. Now you were working on a Zen doodle before we got started. You don't have to do that. If you wanted to draw something else, I um, mean like the chicken and stuff like that, you could certainly do that. But this is a fun, fun way just to start off with a sort of base drawing so that you can work into it. So Spencer, let me see what you were working on before we got started. Oh, well, you know my style. This is my chicken. <laughs> this it's is great. the kind of thing that I do because yes, I, it is. Because I know uh, how to do this kind of. Hang on, uh, hold it up there, Spencer. I, I'm get, I got a pin year so I can see. My, that's my chicken. Oh. This is the kind of thing I do. And you say you're not creative. Yeah. Well, this is ripping Karen <laughs> off because I opened her seven links and she did one like this. I just basically am doing the same thing she did with a square and a circle. And it's, it's, I'm going to, I'm going to doodle my dog now. You know, uh, so yeah. that's the thing about art though. The art is, is, you know, taking. You're frozen. Really? Or I'm frozen. No, you're yeah, Karen, fine. you're okay. It must be, it must be you, Spencer. Yes, yeah, okay. I can't see you. And he, I'm still looking at his artwork. So the thing about art is taking ideas that other people have done and making them your own. So are you back, Spencer? I am. I'm just, I didn't hear for about a minute. Okay, did you hear what I said about taking people's ideas and making them your own? Well, I think you've said that before. You said yeah. that it's just about using other people's ideas and making them your own. Yeah. I get that. I'm not, I'm yeah. not, I just, I just, I'm going to doodle my dog. I'm going to, I'm going to turn my dog into something, but I don't yeah. know how to add accents to make it. I, I personally like this dog. So I'm going to doodle this dog. Okay. I mean, it, it doesn't look like a dog like Elizabeth, but it's the closest I can do. No, and you can see, so here I'm just, I'm just adding lines and moving, like closing up some lines and making, basically I'm just making some shapes within my dog. Like I have no idea what's going on down there, but I'll be able to doodle in there. And I sometimes like to fix up the eyes a little bit. So that it looks like he's actually got eyes there so i've just added a bunch of things and then i can work in and do my doodles and sometimes i don't doodle too much on the face because i want them to see this dog and you guys have access to my doodle pages right? If you need yeah. them. And then it can just be sort of a, I don't know, sort of a relaxing sort of just doing things. One of my dogs looks like a cow. <laughs> he does. Oh, look at the nose though. He's so cute. 
but I'm going to do this guy. You know, when I do this in the class with the kids and I go around and I tease the kids about what I'm like, what's going on with this dog? What happened to him? Where's the tail? And stuff like that. The kids are just, they're laughing so hard. You know, the kids sound like they are too. Yeah. Well, you know, we like to have fun. So it's kind of nice to bring my crazy dogs back into play. I haven't done them for a long time. And the hard one of the things is because I don't get rid of things and I always don't want to waste things. Every time I draw a dog, I always feel like I need to finish it. So I have hundreds of cards with, dogs. with the dogs that I've just scribbled on. And one day, one day they might be, they might be real. That's what me and my friend was used to do when we were coloring. The whatever we were coloring couldn't be real until it was done. I don't know where I get that from. So Karen, um, Zoe's grandma passed away last week. Oh. So I, I don't know if they're going to come on. I don't yeah. know anymore. Uh, I felt so bad. It was suddenly eh? like I saw her at Christmas and she was fine. So very sad for Chloe and Emily. Yeah. Was that Emily's mom? Yeah, Emily's mom. She was only a little bit older than me. Oh, dear. And she was so healthy. They called her granola granny. She always, you know, ate organic food and hiked up all the mountains up there. And Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. She just had a heart attack. That's so scary, right? Yeah, like it really makes you, you know, think about your mortality. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Oh, well, that's sad. Yeah. Well, I, I was uh, saying to Spencer, I was apologizing for getting the information about what we were doing up so late um, because we didn't do it until today. <laughs> it's just, I'm getting worse and worse. But what I did today was I actually prepped for next week and the week after. Oh, good for you. So we will be doing, I, I'm calling them directed paintings next week, which is your idea that you brought to us. So we'll be doing some painting. All right. So thank you for that. It, I, you know, I actually went away from last week thinking about it. And the next day I was writing ideas down and stuff like that. I was very, I'm very excited about it. So. Oh, awesome. Good. Yeah. So I figured we'd do that. And like, I don't know if we'll get I, I set it up to do four pieces, um, but we if we can't get through all four, then it might take a second week to work on them. Okay. And then after the, we're done those, um, I wanted to talk about framing and presentation. Mm. That, that might be Speaking kind of, of framing. Mm -hmm. You suggested that Leslie and I use a uh, standard frame for my spider project. And that is what it looks like now. Oh. You can't really see it very well, but 
No. The images of the bola spider is that's the that's the end result. That looks pretty good. So, yeah, it, that's good. You know, I did something this week or last week, Karen. Um, let me just grab it because it's right here. I had this frame that I got, and you know, Sharon says don't use frames from like Value Village. <laughs> whatever but you know i can't afford to buy all black frames and i don't have a handy husband that can do them for me so anyways this was a frame that i got from value village yeah and um it was like this weird kind of sort of silver sort of gold color and it just didn't and it was like metallic mm -hmm. and it was ugly and you could see seams in it and so I, um, I painted it with phthalo blue mm -hmm. and well, I sanded it first. So, you mm -hmm. know, the paint would stick better. And I painted it with phthalo blue, which is transparent. So it's still the metallic shines through. Yeah. I can and see then it. I like took a little piece of sponge and I blotted it with black. Yeah. And I love how it came out. It turned out really well. Like it I, looked really good. Yeah, I just think it's so pretty and it goes with my painting really well now. Well, you know, and I find that I, I know like sometimes I get irritated when people cheap out on frames, right? And and I'm one to talk because I'll take a frame and I'll repaint it if I want to use it, right? And yeah, I, I'm just that way. I'm, I'm thrifty that way. Um, but I get people coming into a place where I work Oh, that's, wow, you did a lot of doodles really fast. How did you do that so quickly? Well, not a lot, but that's my doodle dog. <laughs> that is not as it looks pretty good. As I can't but I get tell. a lot of people who are setting up for art shows and they come in and they'll cheap out on their frames and I'll just say, you know, you, you know, if you're planning on selling this at a show, you need to have a half decent frame. I've also had people show up at shows and their frames are damaged. And I said to one lady, we were in, in a show together and she brought in this frame. It was really damaged. And I said, look, I said, you shouldn't be putting something like this in the show. I said, you know what I do with damaged frames? I said, take your art out of this frame, take a metal ruler and go all over the frame and then paint it black. And it'll look like a distressed frame. And she's like, what? <laughs> I said, yeah. Just, if it's got a chip in it or a gouge in it, just gouge the heck out of it and then paint it. And it, it, and it turns out just fine. That's a, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Um, actually, so Elizabeth, if you want to come over, I have lots of frames. Um, I think I have enough right now because I'm just um, working on, you know, course stuff, nothing that I'm going to frame. Okay, because I just had a garage sale this weekend and I had a billion frames in there and they're all going to Value Village. Oh, well, that hurts me. <laughs> I know. Some of them are pretty big, though. I know you like the smaller ones because you do. I do. Through. Yeah, I don't do a lot of big paintings yet. Oh. Hi, Jody. Hi, Karen. We're doodling today. I see that. I'm catching up. We do not get any dogs. Oh, okay. I started to draw a flower. That works too. Because I have this uh, package for sunflowers, although I didn't do a sunflower in the end. Okay. So, okay. So you're just uh, doing uh, that and then you're Zen doodling, huh? Yeah, I, we sort of did my, um, my Zen doodle dog um, race. I think I've done it with you, Jody. Not a, as a race. Yeah, I've done it. You haven't done it as a race? No. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Anyway, so that's why they're crazy like this is because you're going as fast as you can. Okay. Actually, that probably improved my drawing. It often does. You, you, you have to let go of stuff. Yeah. Otherwise, you get too tight, just like, you know, when I had to draw that security guard. Yeah. That's a good point.
There's nothing worse than somebody expecting you to do something on demand and then, oh. <laughs> Yeah, I think you have to be really good and have a lot of confidence before you can do that kind of thing. Yeah. And then there's the the other thing, like Jody is very good at drawing. Like like she's very very good at drawing and we would go places, Jody and I. And we'd be sketching and she, we went to, we went and sketched the parliament buildings and Jody's very precise with her drawing and things like that. So she's spending lots of time drawing the parliament building, everything perfect. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I'm drawing like 10 really fast sketches of the parliament building because <laughs> they're messy and kind of orderly. <laughs> you know, they're just... We, we definitely have a different approach to things. Yeah. But I get, I get, um, maybe I've lost some capacity for that. I don't know. I, I get, well, and I don't sketch very often. I don't, I only, I really only have time for that when I go away, you know, I'm traveling like in another country. Or something. Then I'll do some sketches of buildings and things like that. Yeah, I don't always get time to do that. Sometimes I'll do like sketches at work, but they're usually just doodles or something because I have, I, I don't want to draw the staff room. That'd be cool. <laughs> what, it's not inspiring? Not get out. Really? Yeah. You know what, uh, Karen, that's interesting that you should say that because, you know, I go and visit my husband in long-term care three times a week. And recently someone passed away and they had this sketchbook and the, and the staff at the, at the care center took photocopies, colored photocopies of the sketchbook and put them up on the walls. Mm -hmm. And it was all pictures from the rooftop garden. And it was just all sketches that he'd done sitting in his wheelchair on the rooftop garden and it was amazing. And it was just like, like all this up there is like, there's just some boxes and with some little flowers in it and some chairs and tables. But, you know, he just had pictures from every different angle. And I thought, you know, you don't have to have something special to sketch. And I'm like terrible for that too, because I'm like always looking for that, oh, that moment, you know, that captures my artist spirit yeah. to draw. <laughs> well and yeah. actually there's you just a girl. draw anything exactly and there's a girl that i know and she does paintings and quite often her paintings depict like back alleys or a post box on the side of the road oh and yeah they're, they're, they're lovely right because they're just this is life you know and i uh, when i worked downtown one of the things i used to do is i used to go into i used to take my lunch in a, in like a meeting room and i'm up in the nova building like what was I, the 26th floor or something like that? So I would, I would draw pictures of the city outside my window. And I always thought that those were really interesting, but mm. yeah, yeah, like, you know, doing that rooftop garden, it's just like doing a still life. I mean, you could do that with, you know, just any room in your house, you could do that, but yeah, definitely. I draw the line at drawing the staff room where I work. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just not doing it. <laughs> I don't think I need any remembrances of that when I'm I believe there. So, well, but again, you know, it's a, it's a snapshot of life. It is. Well, this guy's got quite a few doodles in him. Not very exciting.
I'm reminded once again at how kind of cathartic it is to do Zen doodles and just stop. Stop the craziness of the day and just. Do yeah. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's me to race until art class today. Yeah. Say that again. You had to race to get to I said, nobody class. asked me to race today until art class. Oh. <laughs> You're going to have okay. to race. <laughs> yeah. My turn. She's a taskmaster. I don't know about that, but that worked. Here's somebody drawing. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll put mine. I'll put mine on mute. That's no, mute. no, 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 no. You like it. <laughs> yeah. No, don't go. <laughs> we like it. Yeah, I'll slurp. I'll, I'll, I'll add to the thing and I'll slurp my gin and tonic. Oh, I do drink in a way. I'm just having juice. I have, it's, it's later here. Yeah, gin and juice. That's okay. Last week I had rum and coke, and by the end of the thing, my face was so red. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, do you want another rum and coke? I'm like, no. I was like dying. My face was all hot and not, not used to drinking. <laughs> I had a girlfriend that I used to work with, and and whenever she drank anything at all, her her nose would turn just bright red. <laughs> yeah. It was so funny. We used to just tease her about it because she could just have a beer at noon and she'd have this bright red nose. Aww. <laughs> I think our, our our Uncle Bill was like that. It's like that. His nose would get red when he drank. Well, and he came from a drinking family, so. <laughs> you know, they drank a lot. Yeah, that was one of the things I was glad that we moved away from Winnipeg. We, we ended up not growing up in that kind of milieu so much. My husband is from Winnipeg. Oh, yeah. Or, or from Selkirk. Okay, that's close. Yeah. Well, Karen and I moved away when we were, Karen was seven and I was 10. Mm. So our, I don't know if that counts. And then our teenage years were in Calgary. Oh. With a brief stop in New Zealand, living in New Ooh. Zealand for a couple years. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, that's quite the travel. Winnipeg it was. to Calgary via New Zealand. Well, we, my parents, they, our parents, uh, my dad wanted to try another country. So they sold everything, less eight trunks. He did, and he didn't have a job to go to. Friends of friends Whoa. met us off the boat. He had two small daughters. He'd saved money, but he's a chartered accountant. And um, so we jumped on a ship from Vancouver and sailed down to New Zealand. And those friends of friends met us. He ordered a car, a little Austin Mini Maxi from um, England. And we ended up buying a little caravan and traveling around for, I think it was nine months, looking wow. for a place that we'd want to live and where my dad could find some work. Karen and I were kind of homeschooled roughly <laughs> that time. Wow. Really? I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, it was pretty neat That's adventure quick. actually. How long, how long were you gone for? How long did you live there? Almost, almost two years. Yeah, so the idea was we are emigrating, but at the time 
uh, there was a couple of factors. One, it was, you know, pre-internet and all that stuff. And it, it was very far away from their parents and, and just things. And also um, the economy was such that they were losing a lot by bringing money over and yeah. the, and things like houses and cars and so forth cost about the same as in Canada, but jobs were about half. So my oh. parents decided, okay, either we hunker down and no, we might never be able to move back to Canada, you know, to make that move or we go now. And I think even the day they got on the ship, hey, Karen, they still weren't sure they were making the right decision, but we came back and we, we, moved, we went to Calgary because that was kind of the land of opportunity and my aunt lived there. And So what year was that that you, you went there? So we went in 1972. So now you know I was born in 62 and mm. um, Karen's three years younger. And we came back in 74, I guess, at the end of 74, I think it was, Karen. Well, that's, that's interesting because, you know, when, when I, in 1969, when I was nine, because I was born in 1960, okay. my dad uh, got a job working with CISO, which is Canadian Engineering Services Overseas, and we moved to Columbia, South America. Oh, that's very cool. Wow. So yeah, we lived down there for a year, but yeah, he, he wow. had everything set up and <laughs> there was no risk involved. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, that still, was... like Columbia, I mean, that's. Yeah, yeah wow. it was, it was interesting. So you, so you remember quite a bit of, of that time. Oh then. man, let me tell you, I remember so much because it was really a formative year for me and mm -hmm yeah uh, like when yeah, i think about the year after, after or the a year before i remember very little but things that went on in columbia i just have very vivid memories now have you ever had an opportunity as an adult to go back no i never have yeah i don't know oh. you know i, I don't were know you there? if i would want to go back we were there for a year yeah because kind of a special time. i think it would take the magic away you know yeah yeah hmm, hmm. I decided to start a second dog because that dog seems full enough. Mm -hmm. You're quick with your dogs. I, uh, I've had to be pretty quick with my dogs through the years, teaching them. So next week, there's a whole list of things that you can bring to the table for the directed painting. And directed be, painting. Yes. So it's it's um, taking off of the idea that um, Elizabeth gave us last week. So we'll be working on four paintings. Wow. And so you can do them on paper or canvas or whatever you want, or a combination of both. Um, if you want to do, I have. Can you um, refresh my memory of what Elizabeth had? Okay, well, it's all, it's just a, like, so we're gonna use eight and a half, eight, eight by 10 um, paper. 
or you can use a canvas board if you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you could do one canvas board and the rest paper. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a selection of different materials and it'll be like, okay, two paint strokes and our two paint strokes of one color and one paint stroke of another color or something like that. And so each, each painting will have different directions for you to sort of try something on. Okay. That sounds exciting. I thought be, I, I was actually very excited about it last week. So I thought, okay, I was going to do it this week, but I just didn't pull my act together. So, well, this one's better for me this week because I've got my sister coming to visit me tomorrow and all my, my, I had to put my studio, or my dining room table away so that they would have a place to eat. Oh, <laughs> Where's your sister coming from? She's coming from Casper, Wyoming. Oh, God. they're they're traveling up to Alaska. They're gonna they're taking this long road trip to Alaska. Mm -hmm. So I'm on the way, and I haven't seen her for oh, probably five years. Gosh. So it'll be really nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long will they stay with you for? Just two days. But you know, I have other family. They, they, I have a sister in McGrath and I have a sister in Cardston and I've got mm -hmm. another brother here in Calgary and another one up in Calmar towards Edmonton. So, you know, they have a lot of people to visit. And why are they going to Alaska? Is their family up there too? No, uh, no, they don't. They just, I guess, just want to, wanted to go, wanted to do the, the road trip. I mean, when you think about it, to go from Wyoming to Alaska has got to be a pretty awesome drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and really anywhere is going to be awesome for their, for them coming from Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> Wyoming's pretty nice, isn't it? Wyoming is beautiful just on the west edge and the rest of it is just the ugliest oh. dirt hole you've ever seen in your life. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we went down there several years ago to visit them and, uh, you know, when you, when you go gradually, the scenery changes gradually. You don't notice so much just how ugly it really is. <laughs> but when we came back, we're just like, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like Alberta is so beautiful. I just couldn't believe <laughs> like just even the prairie and farmlands and it's green grasses, grains blowing and, you know, yellow canola fields and everything just seems so alive. Wyoming is just dry and prickly and dirty <laughs> and windy and it's not a it's not a okay. place. <laughs> wow. Well, Wyoming tourism isn't gonna ask you to be their spokesperson. <laughs> no, they better not. <laughs> Yeah, not likely. Now, now the west side of it, because then you get into the mountains, you know, like the Tetons and yeah, on the, the west Tetons side is, are is, is beautiful over there. Yeah, but like Jackson Hole area, where, right? Where they are is I've been to Jackson. Casper. It's like right in kind of in the middle, and it's it's not nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. That's where uh, Susan got her dog, Karen, is in the Targi National Forest, That's which is in oh, Wyoming. Targi. Yeah. Remember him? Yeah, I do. He's a nice dog. Yeah.
All right. Well, how's everybody doing? Do we need to Whoa. switch the camera so I can see everybody's stuff? Sure, but I'm only about a third of the way. Well, I joined you guys late, so whatever. Like you were talking a lot, too. I wish you didn't stop, Billy. Yeah, you can keep going when you're doodling. Doodling gives itself to more conversation. Yeah. Well, okay. I'll show you what I have so far. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, oh he's looking good. really good. Can you talk, Elizabeth, so I can see? Oh, it okay. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> There's <Okay>. my dog. <laughs> If hey. you're on your computer, you can switch it to gallery view and you'll see everybody's face. It yeah, but you, want, you, right. you wanted to highlight her, yeah. though, right? Yeah, I got I or, got that, Bill. I just couldn't see it in great yeah. detail. Another thing you can do is like if you hover on that person's screen, there's okay. three little dots. And if you press the dots, there's a thing that says pin. And then they'll get big whether they're talking or not. But then you have to unpin it to get rid of them. Yeah. All right. Spencer, what are you working on? You're working on your first one? Because well, you did your dog I, uh, already. I did, I did my dog. I don't, I, uh, my dog was a simple one. Oh, but he looks awesome. so good. I, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I did really quickly. I didn't really know how oh, to. Oh, he's so cute. I didn't like you guys. But then I was working on my chicken. So I was just working on my chicken. A oh. chicken? No, it's not a chicken. But that's oh. what he's calling his chicken. <laughs> I was going to be like, wow, that's right up my alley. All right, let's, <laughs> see, let's see yours, Jody. So, so okay. when, when mine is not a I, chicken. It's when I told like, you that uh, I took um, pictures of chickens into my students, Jody takes live chickens in. Yeah, I do, but I didn't do a chicken. I was starting on a flower, so oh, there it is. Nice. Wow. Wow, pretty. Oh, it looks nice, yeah. Very yeah. nice. Oh, and let's see, uh, and let's see yours again, Karen. So I have, I was working on these two top dogs. Top dogs. I like, I like the sort of the way you leave uh, white areas. So it looks like tattoos almost. Yeah, I feel like sometimes when I'm doing it, it's like they're like Maori dogs. <laughs> yeah. There you go. To bring back the New Zealand thing. That, that, that's that New Zealand stuff coming out on me. So, all right. So, yeah. So next week we'll be doing some directed painting and uh, we should have some fun with that. And I've got the next two weeks sort of set aside. So you'll actually get updates before the Monday or before the Sunday because well, I've already. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to wait till the Sunday. I've already sent them to Bill, so if they're not out there, it's his fault. <laughs> so, anyway, all right. So, thanks, guys, for joining me. Thank and you, Karen. Thank you, done. Karen. Okay. Have a good Bye. night. You too.